Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugalissima. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Uh, I hope you're all well. I thought I'd just nip on uh, and very quickly t tell you about some of the things that I've been making recently. Um, just before we go on to the reveal date for the So Frugal um, challenge. I hope everybody's getting on okay with the challenge and we've just got about a week to go now. So I thought if I uh, talked about some of the things that I've been making over the winter now uh, and then that's out of the way and then I can just keep everything together for my reveal date on the 31st of March uh, for our So Frugal Challenge. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, myself and Ruan at the Yorkshire So Girl uh, are running a challenge and that is to make yourself uh, an outfit, a garment out of um, fabric that you already have in your stash and uh, using uh, a free pattern. I nearly forgot my own challenge then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, I've got a video all about that, so I will link that at the end if you don't know what it's about. And there's lots and lots of prizes to win, and you've just got about a week to get a shifty on and enter. So I hope you're all getting on well with it and you're enjoying everybody's videos. So on to what I've been making over the last couple of months. I haven't made a made video since about November, I think. And um, I've just sort of been a little bit busy. <laughs> I have my own, own business teaching people how to sew. If you've not joined me before, that's what I do. I teach people to sew. Now I've got a studio in West Yorkshire. And uh, yeah, I've been busy making samples up for classes and things like that. So I have managed to make a couple of things. So the thing that you can see behind me, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, but I'll start with this which is uh, the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. So this was a, a, a pattern that came free in a magazine, uh, Simply Sewing magazine. And I think it was probably January's edition. And I bought it. I don't buy a lot of sewing, sewing magazines now um, because they t tend to be a bit samey. But every now and again, they do have um, patterns from sort of well-renowned designers and something a little bit uh, different. So this uh, pattern, this uh, they, they had three patterns. So they had the crossbody bag, um, they had this blouse, the blouse, <laughs> and this row and pinafore. And I actually intended making all three of them, but you know, time gets away from you, doesn't it? And <laughs> I got a chance. So that's this so far is the only one that I've got, managed to make. Um, but yeah, I liked all three of those, and I thought it was actually good value for money. I think uh, let's see how much it costs. Uh, I can't tell you, it doesn't say on here, uh, probably under under £10, so it's good value for money because I think this pattern sells for about eighteen ninety nine for the printed version, so I think that's fairly good value for money really. Um, right, so on to the back blouse then, uh, fairly straight through the body, there's no actual uh, bust darts, uh, it goes straight through, straight through the body, lovely elasticated cuff detail here. It is described as a, some, for somebody who wants a, a shirt but a little bit more casual. So you've got a little stand-up collar here. It's only got four pattern pieces. So you've got your front and your back, uh, your sleeve and then this collar piece because the placket for the um, button holes is actually growing on. Um, so really actually a very straightforward pattern. I'm just going to refer to my notes to tell you some more details about it. So I made uh, a size two i came uh, between a size two and a three for my bust um but when i looked at the finished garment measurements i actually felt uh that a size two would be better for me so it goes on in sizes zero to two which uh let me just double check for you uh goes up to a 52 inch bust uh my bust is uh 30 36 and I've got a waist of 30 and a hip of 38 so sort of varied between the size 2 and the size 3 and I decided the size um, 2 would be fine and it fits just perfectly. Um, I made it in this beautiful cotton lawn which I got from Fabworks and it's supposedly uh, a liberty, I'm not sure whether it is or not, uh, had it in my stash for over a year uh, and I just absolutely love it. Wear it a lot with my um, Sarah pleated pants that I made for last year's So Frugal uh, and I'll show you some pictures of me wearing it while uh, you know with, the, with that together. I've also worn it with uh, like a, a top underneath in the colder months and I've got a little Edith top is it Edith top or an Edith top from so over it and it's it sort of blends in with these colours and it looks really nice or I think it does anyway <laughs> um so yeah it's um 
it, you can make it with a lawn or a visco so that's the um suggested fabrics for it um but yeah i thought it was a uh, really nice uh it came together really nicely uh the instructions were really clear the color went in without a fight <laughs> sometimes it does and i actually inserted the um the sleeves on the flat because of no gathering in so that's the sort of only changes that i made to it really on this tons and tons i really really do like it wearing it so on to the next thing that i made and this is something that i made just before christmas and it's what you can see up here and i'll just get it down for you so this is the lois dress or l-o-i-s lois i'm pronouncing it as lois lane yep uh by tasuti fabrics and this is a pattern that um we went to i went to the knitting and stitching show in harrogate with a friend of mine and uh, she actually bought the pattern and uh, she's in my sewing class and she said i'd like really like to be able to learn how to sew this so this is actually a twelve for me because I'd never sewn it before and I can't really teach somebody how to sew something, uh, particularly because it's got a, a sneaky little zip in, in the um, in the dart area, um, sort of, let me just show you. I haven't put the zip in, but I'll show you where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go in here, in this dart here, but because it's so low on the v-neck there I can get it over my head without actually putting a, a zip in so I didn't bother um but yeah there's a few th a few techniques on it that I thought I better just test it May as well for fit as well because I think you know I, I've not sewn a lot of tasuti pa patterns I've made the Mandy Boat tee which is fairly loose fitting so I wanted to make sure that before she cut into her precious fabrics uh that the the, the um instructions were clear enough uh, and that the fit was going to be correct. So I think I made a size 10 at the top and graded it to a size 12 at the waist on this one. But it's so long ago, I made it just before Christmas and wore it for a Christmas do. Uh, so long ago that I can't remember, <laughs> but I'm fairly sure that's what I did. So some really nice details on it. It's got a nod to vintage as this, and um, I wore it at the weekend to my niece's Hindu. Uh, and then met my friends later in the pub and somebody said, oh, you look like a 1950s style in it, which was very nice, but I don't think I do. But anyway, that was really nice. But um, yeah, so it has got a nod to vintage. It it says in the blur for on Tasuti that it's got a nod to 1940s tea dress. It's got a lovely deep V, but not too revealing. It, it kind of hugs you. And I think that that's because they advise you to put um, a tear away um, interfacing strip interface into that v uh, i didn't have any so i had some um some of this stay stitch um interfacing and i put that into the v which I'll, i don't think you'll be able to see it very much of it but you can see that it is it is very stable is that v it's not going anywhere so it's just bias bound around the the edge they also tell you to put some stabilizers in stabilizer rather into the um shoulder seam and then you've just got a nice um cap sleeve detail here to finish the sleeve not doing a very good job of showing you but yeah uh, nice and swishy skirt the skirt's unusual in that it's a it's a smaller at the back than it is at the front it's just a re really nice shape really really nice shape and i think rowan made one so uh this this niece that uh whose hen party that i went to on saturday uh gets married in a fortnight and i think i might make um a, a different version of it for the wedding because <laughs> i know it fits me uh, so the pattern's ready to go my friend's ready to sew hers up uh, so it'd be nice for us to to sew it together i thought and um, that's one of my options i did have another option of doing something else but i think that's going to be the easiest to go now i've left it so late <laughs> um the fabric is um it's a viscose viscose twill um let me just show you close up somebody left uh three meters of this uh, of it on a, a sewing um a sewing meet, meet up you know on the swap table uh so if it was you thank you very much and <laughs> um, it was it's a lovely lovely weight to it nice and swishy and um, i just i i personally like that color on me i don't wear a lot of red i always feel quite self-conscious wearing when i'm wearing red but i always get quite a few compliments so i believe it must suit me i don't know so the next thing that i've got to talk about is uh the pogo knit sweater by uh friday pattern company so here she is I'll, i will insert photographs but i'll show you here as well um so this is mine 
I made it for the um, Pogo Nip Party, which is arranged by Christine, who's Gemini Stitches, and the reveal date was the 1st of March. Now, <laughs> I was supposed to make a video about that, so I'm, uh, I'd like to say fashionably late to the party, but I just not had time to make a video and, and chat about these things. There's a lot of work goes into making a video about your makes and trying to remember what you've done. I'm not that organised in where to make notes, so I, I, you know I've got to go back on on my notes and remember what I've done. Uh, and I'm not that organised, I'm afraid. I've got a lot of other things going on, um, so I didn't get chance to. Uh, reveal it on the, I revealed it on Instagram, which was part of the thing, but I was part of the vlogger tour and I never got a chance. Uh, but I did actually make, start making this uh, probably before Christmas. And when Christine announced that she was doing the Pogo Knit Party, I thought that's a great way for me to get this finished. A deadline always makes me get things finished. I'm, I'm a, a deadline person. So I did just get it finished uh, just in time for the reveal day on Instagram. And I managed to win a prize, <laughs> ironically. Um, so I have got uh, the choice of a pattern. This has been made from a quilt that I found in a charity shop for four pounds. It's from the Futon uh, company. So it's already pre-quilted. And I was very much inspired by this image that I'm gonna show you now. It was wearing the uh, lovely pink quilt, pre-quilted one. So that is one of the recommended fabrics, uh, pre-quilted, you can make it in something much lighter weight if you want, uh, denims or uh, velour or a corduroy. And it's just, a. I just as soon as I saw the pattern, I actually bought it because it was on discount <laughs> when, it was, when it was first issued. Uh, I did go and buy it and I, I did sort of get really enthusiastic about it, got three quarters of the way through and I, I just fell out of love with it. I don't know why. I think it might be because it's cropped. Uh, but now I've made it, I do really like it. Now you might remember this fabric from one of my previous videos when I was doing the um, November Upcycle Challenge by Becky, Becky and Karen, I think, run it. Um, and I was going to make a zero waste coat and it was a long coat. And I decided actually in this colour, I thought it'd look like a dressing gown. So I, I'd swayed against that. So I've got loads of this left actually. So I do like a lot of the details on it. On the actual um, uh, website, it shows it's got a pocket at the back. Now, I thought that the pocket wouldn't go on this particular version because it's not a lightweight and it'd be too too uh, bulky. But on a lighter weight one, I would definitely uh, put that on because I think it's one of the attractions of the pattern, one of the points of difference of the pattern. Um, it's got a nice stand-up collar and then you've got this button pocket, three-quarter Pluck it at the front, which I've opted to put snaps on, but you can put buttons on, and then elasticated cuffs at the bottom. Now you might notice that my cuffs are a lot deeper than everybody else's, and that's when I tried it on, and my sleeves were a lot too short. Now I've heard a few people say that the sleeves are a little bit short on these, so I whipped off the, I think it's supposed to be one inch elastic, and swapped it for uh, a two inch elastic and made it a little bit longer. Still, I would say about an inch too short, so I need to remember to add that to next time uh, I make it. So you've got your welt pockets at the front here, uh, and then the inside uh, is, it's got um, a, a, a lining over the top of those pockets to stop them dropping down and keep them enclosed. I'm not going to lie, the welt pockets were a bit tricky, uh, uh, but then I watched the um, video that Chelsea made and it, it, it was quite straightforward after that. I've made welt pockets before, but the few and far between, you forget, don't you? Um, and when I was making uh, such as the welt pockets and the casings for the elastic at the bottom and the cuffs, I actually took out the wadding so that it wasn't too thick and chunky. Uh, so that was just a bit of a pain to unpick it all and what have you but yeah it worked out really well so yeah I, I do like the finished result actually uh, I do really like it it's just that I, I've stalled in the middle Christmas came along and uh, the the actual challenge got me making it again so I'm quite glad I got that finished. If I made it again I would uh, omit the elastic at the bottom and maybe put a curved hem on it or something like that maybe make it in a denim or something like that I've, I've, I've seen some nice denim ones and it, they look really nice and I've seen I've seen some really nice versions with a curved hem as well so I will definitely make it again I'm not so sure I'd make it with the elastic uh, at the waist again um, if you're wearing something warm 
I want my bum covering up. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, yeah, so the next thing I've made is, I've made quite a lot of bags actually, mostly as samples uh, for the studio, uh, this being one of them. Uh, this was a sample for the studio for a class that I put on. Um, this is just like a roll top um, bag. It's supposed to have some uh, interfacing in it, but uh, because I was making samples, I didn't bother. So it, it rolls over like that. You've got a contrast bottom here. Uh, I played about with the stripes here. You've got a little zip at the front uh, and it's fully lined. Uh, so this was, um, this is actually a, um, a tutorial I saw on YouTube, but it's just a, a sequence of different squares. Um, and you, you, t you know, you, you, you measure them all out. So it's not a pattern. It's not a paper for a pattern or anything. Um, but when I put it together first time, um, the measurements didn't quite work out. So I had to do a bit of what we call califudging in Yorkshire uh, and do my, do my own sort of little um, twists on it. So yeah, played about with the stripes there. This fabric's actually left over from uh, an apron I made my granddaughter at Christmas. And I've still got some left actually, I've still got quite a lot. Uh, and then you can either make the straps out of the fabric or webbing. I went for webbing and it's fully adjustable is that. Uh, and what else is there? Yeah, it's a zip at the top. Just a, just a really nice, useful rucksack, which I took on holiday to Seville this time, and it fit lots of things in for my hand luggage. So that's that one. The other bag that I made was um, the Bestie bag from Blackbird Fabrics. Uh, so this is it. I made it in a like a velour furnishing fabric, really. Um, so it's got a zip at the top here, which I did in a contrast red. Uh, you can make uh, the straps in a webbing or I've just used a self fabric. It's adjustable strap um, and I've seen some really nice versions of, of this. Um, I actually saw a lady in Harrogate where my son lives and she had this sort of leopard print with the red red contrast and I thought, oh, she looks cool. So I thought I'm going to try and make replicate it. Um, I'm not sure I look that cool in it, but you know, <laughs> uh, so I've done, gone with a Red contrast lining, you've got two interior pockets in here, uh, a double pocket at one side and then a single pocket at the other side. And yeah, really roomy. So this comes in two sizes. Uh, it comes in a medium and a large. This one's the medium, so it's big. Uh, and then you've got the option of putting a pleat on. So I didn't go for the pleated option. Uh, and I actually took this on holiday as my sort of evening bag. Um, so I only took two bags, this one and, and that one, and you get loads in it. It's really, really useful. Uh, so yeah, I can highly recommend that pattern. It was really sort of quite easy, straightforward to put together. Quite tricky getting it under the machine with the thick fabrics, um, you know, it, but once you've battled through that, that's fine. Uh, really good instructions and uh, yeah, really enjoyed making that. So that's my makes. <laughs> I haven't made a lot. I'm on with uh, so frugal makes, obviously. So I've got a few. I will have a few makes to show you for that. Uh, any other news? So yeah, hope you're getting on okay with the so frugal. Um, I have got um, a little little announcement to make. Uh, we did a a, a meetup last year called Gathering. So it's equivalent of the frock tales that um, people have all over the world. Um, we did it in Yorkshire and we called it The Gathering simply because we didn't want anybody to think that they had to make a fancy frock for it. So we saw, sort of said, make your own garment if you want, but it doesn't have to be like a prom or occasion dress, you know, make it, make it just come in your jeans if you want. If, and you don't have to make them if you don't want. And we've got some tickets left for that. So that's the 27th of April. Uh, this year and that's in Cleckheaton, West Yorkshire. I will leave the link below if you fancy coming. We've got a few tickets left. I'm holding a social uh, in the morning at my place, at my studio in Harbury as well. So there's a few places left for that. And I'm also having a, a colour consultant coming along as well. That's Tony um, from uh, TLC Style and Colour who did Ruan's uh, colours. She also did Donna's who size me sewing who I'm arranging the gathering with. Just one place left for that at 12.30. So again, I will link that below if you fancy coming uh, fancy coming to any of those. Um, it'd be nice to see people. Uh, it's it's good fun. We have a DJ. We've got something to eat in the, in the uh, ticket price. First drink's included. And what else is there? Oh, lot, lots of prizes. We, um, we don't randomly draw the prizes, but we do um, have some... Uh, we allocate them on 
on daft things you know what I mean so um but we did have a sort of a people's choice and things like that last year so lots of prizes for it uh really worth coming along and uh seeing some of uh some of your favorite sewing people that you've seen on Instagram or YouTube or whatever uh, a nice opportunity to have a natter to sewing friends so that's it from me today I shall see you on Sunday on reveal day for so frugal uh if you're not <laughs> if you've not made a start get cracking if you've made any of these patterns and what you thought of them and uh, I shall speak to you later thanks for watching bye